Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Peter Dubois. And I'm Beth Jones. First tonight, police have released new details about an incident in Carmel yesterday. Authorities say a man was shot by his teenage son. Just before 4 p.m., Penobscot County Sheriff's deputies were called to the main road in Carmel. When they arrived, they found the victim with a single gunshot wound to the torso. Police seized the gun and took the teen in, into custody without incident. That investigation remains ongoing. A statement says the dangerous situation continues to reveal the ongoing challenges with the current juvenile criminal process, statutes, and mental health system. Members of the Penobscot County Sheriff's Office arrested several people during what they're calling a quote high risk search earlier this evening. The Sheriff's Office special response team and Main State Police tactical team executed that high risk search warrant around 6 p.m. on the West Etna Road in Etna. Authorities partially shut down that road for some time and Sheriff Troy Morton says several people were detained during the search. No one was injured. The reason for the search is unclear at this time, but we'll update you as we learn more. An Orrington man has been arrested after police say he jumped out of a moving vehicle and later fired shots. The Penobscot County Sheriff's Office says around 8 o'clock last night they got a call about a man who the callers say was intoxicated. They say they'd been trying to help him with a ride, but that man jumped out of the moving vehicle. They say when deputies made contact with the man, he was not injured but was confrontational. The man had not committed any, any crime, and so he was allowed to return home. However, the Sheriff's Office says later, while deputies were still in the area following up, that man allegedly fired several shots. They returned to his residence and took him into custody. The man has been identified as 23 year old Braden Nichols of Orrington. He's charged with disorderly conduct and terrorizing. A man who mutilated and murdered his brother has spoken in court. Justin Butterfield pleaded guilty today in an Androscoggin County courtroom to killing his brother on Thanksgiving of 2022. Johnny Maffey was in Auburn and has new details and the mental health aspects surrounding that case. Justin Butterfield waived his right to a trial this morning by pleading guilty to killing his brother Gabriel Demore back in 2022 and the court finds him not criminally responsible by reason of insanity. All right. I'm so sorry for the impact this had on my family and me and everyone else in the community. He was given a few different diagnoses, so one of them was delusional disorder, one of them was schizophrenia, and one was a substance-induced psychotic disorder. Director of the State Forensic Service Dr. Sarah Miller was questioned on her evaluation of Butterfield. Dr. Miller stated in the eight months prior to Thanksgiving 2022, Butterfield was hospitalized three times and had clear psychotic symptoms dating back to 2018, including audible hallucinations or hearing things. He had a belief that his brother, Mr. Dumour, was the Terminator who was there to um, create the end of the world, essentially, and that Mr. Butterfield uh, was the one who could stop him. In addition to his substance use, Dr. Miller says Butterfield thought the government was drugging him and did not know he was mentally ill. We refer to that as a lack of insight. Which is why Butterfield's former girlfriend, Yesha Provincher, hopes for more mental health resources, calling the situation preventable. Today was definitely an emotional morning. Butterfield is now in custody of a state institution indefinitely. Provincher is thankful he's getting the treatment he needs now, but wishes he got help sooner. I would say if you know an individual is presenting the way that Justin had presented in the past, you know, today or tomorrow, because you know that's happening, um, we take a little bit of extra time and you know, we really think about what we're doing before um, we're releasing these individuals. Former State Senator John Nutting is helping Provincher advocate for additional awareness, especially for things already in effect like the progressive treatment program. And the judge also hopes that cases like this can shine a spotlight on a need for more mental health resources globally. And that was Johnny Matthew reporting. Meanwhile, some alert TSA officers at the Bangor International Airport kept a loaded gun off a plane headed for Hawaii. The officers notified Bangor police about a man with a 22 caliber firearm along with eight rounds in his bag during morning screening on Monday. It was the first firearm detected at a Maine airport this year. TSA's federal security director for Maine says carelessly traveling with a loaded firearm is a serious public safety concern considering it could accidentally discharge during a search. The TSA increased the maximum civil penalty for a firearms violation to nearly $15,000. 
Well, several thousand dollars worth of stolen contractor tools were recovered during a police search at a home in St. Albans Sunday afternoon. The items were reported stolen from a past burglary in the town of Pittsfield. The search warrant was conducted at 13 Gould Lane by the Pittsfield Police Department, along with Maine State Police and the Somerset County Sheriff's Office. According to Pittsfield Police, they are now in the process of returning the stolen, stolen tools to those respective owners. Police arrested 55-year-old Richard Tripp for outstanding warrants, and they say more charges are pending for other suspects in that case. The Somerset County Disaster Recovery Center officially opened today in Skowhegan with the goal of helping those impacted by the December 18th storm. This comes on the heels of President Biden granting Governor Mills' request for a federal disaster declaration. Our Doug Banks has that story. Swallow your pride. You deserve it. We're, we're trying to help get everybody back on track. Located at Four County Drive in Skowhegan, the Somerset County Disaster Recovery Center will be run by the state of Maine and FEMA. What we look at is people who are insured and, and what may be damages beyond that, or if they're underinsured. On Tuesday, Governor Mills met with state and federal officials who urged storm damage manors to apply for the federal assistance for those living in Androscoggin, Franklin, Kennebec, Oxford, and Somerset counties. We had a similar one open up yesterday in Oxford County, and we're going to look to get the other three open uh, in the next couple days. The center is open seven days a week and is not exclusive to Somerset County residents. It will serve as a place for manors to learn and apply for assistance programs for homes, understand notice letters, and more. One of the services provided for homeowners is the U.S. Small Businesses Administration's Office of Disaster Recovery, whose work is to bridge the gap between what FEMA and insurance cannot cover. So we offer that in low interest loans that are subsidized. So for example, homeowners can get 2.68% up to $500,000. Mike Smith of Skowhegan, who retired last week as director of Somerset County EMA, says they received over 700 calls on December 18th, over triple the average per day amount. It's not just the individual assistance, it's the public assistance side too to help out, help out the towns, which ultimately helps out the taxpayers and the individuals. Officials ask that Mainers apply immediately as the deadline for funding is April 1st. If you're not able to go to Recovery Center in person, that information can be found on our website, foxbangor.com. In Skowhegan, Doug Banks, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Legislation seeking to change the way Maine casts its electoral college votes stalled in committee today. The bill would enter Maine into an agreement with other states to cast their electoral college votes for whichever presidential candidate won the national popular vote. The proposal was voted on by the Veterans and Legal Affairs Committee, where it did not gather enough support from members to be re reported out as ought to pass. I do not support the national popular vote in any capacity. Maine is one of two states, uh, in addition to Nebraska, that split their electoral votes among congressional districts. I think that's the model that other states should be adopting so that the voice of, peop of the people is truly heard. With a national popular vote, it gives away Maine's voice to big cities like New York City, Miami, and big states like California. It really drowns out the voice of the people, and that's why I so strongly oppose it. Proponents of the bill say they aren't giving up hope on the legislation and will use the time in between to lobby lawmakers and start counting votes. You know, this is a nonpartisan issue. We have uh, bipartisan co-sponsorship. Unfortunately, what we saw in committee was a partisan divide where Democrats support national popular vote, Republicans oppose it. This is about making every vote equal and guaranteeing the candidate with the most votes wins the election. So. It's unfortunate that that basic principle of fairness is kind of caught up in the partisan divide right now, but uh, we we'll look forward to the floor vote and, and bringing this forward. Well, the bill will now face a vote in the House and Senate to determine its fate. Republican lawmakers say one of their top priorities this legislative session and beyond is drug addiction treatment, recovery and education. According to the Maine Drug Data Hub, 607 Maine people died from overdoses in 2023. Senator Brad Farron of Norwich Walk lost his daughter to an overdose in 2022, and he shared his personal story on why he is supporting LD 353, which seeks to help with the drug epidemic. My daughter Haley was one of those 723 in 2022 that uh, passed away from fentanyl overdose. And at that time, I kind of made a commitment to focus on what I call the three-legged stool, right? Enforcement, 
education and then treatment and harm reduction. We want to bury our heads in the sand and think that we won't be impacted. It won't touch our lives. And I'm telling you that it does. And if you haven't been touched by it, uh, you will be. I think what you've, the image you've seen in the past is that Republicans are the party that's only about enforcement, drug enforcement. Uh, but I think from this point forward, what you're going to see from the Republican Party is a more holistic approach. Senator Farron's bill has a work session scheduled for tomorrow in the Health and Human Services Committee. Well, the Dexter Regional Airport will benefit from $140,000 in new funding for major infrastructure improvements. Part of the money will be used for a new terminal building. A statement from Congressman Jared Golden says the federal funding will help the airport better meet the needs of both customers and staff. The Dexter Regional Airport was built in 1941 as an auxiliary airport to the former Dow Field in Bangor. The airport continues to serve Maine as a public airport and fueling station. Like many coastal communities, the Belfast waterfront faced significant damage from the January storm surges. Now, the city is making plans to not only rebuild, but become more resilient. Our Grace Blanchard explains. Belfast Harbor is one of many waterfronts dealing with major infrastructure damage from those January storms. The January storms, you know, was a rude awakening, like we need to do this ASAP. The city says their goal is to not just rebuild, but become more resilient to any future storms. No current hazard mitigation plan covers the county of Waldo and the city of Belfast. The plan would cover all public infrastructure as it relates to storm damage and other risks. It's really about protecting infrastructure and people. According to the Deputy Economic Development Coordinator, they anticipate millions of dollars in new infrastructure improvements. Some shore stabilization, um, some protection for our wastewater treatment plant, which is down on the harbor. And the goal is to avoid future scenes of destruction like this walk a few feet that way and see the damage for yourself and it's quite considerable and uh, this is probably just the beginning. Some residents say they hope to see the city make more efforts to address the climate crisis. It's, it's great that we're preparing for the future but we also need to do what we can to, to slow down or stop the climate crisis. City officials say their Climate Energy and Utilities Committee is leading the project and will take their time to assess the needs of the community and the waterfront. We have to prioritize, understand our risks, um, our vulnerabilities, and then prioritize what infrastructure and um, facilities we want to protect over, over the next few generations. In Belfast, Grace Blanchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. So many communities still dealing with the aftermath of those storms, but it's great to see uh, places like Belfast uh, really looking to improve on uh, ways that they can better prepare for the next storm to come. I think preparation is everything because I, I think it's clear that, you know, these storms were not anomalous. They'll, right. they, we will continue to get severe storms and you do have to start taking a more forward thinking approach, not just cleaning up from the storm that just happened, right. but you know, sort of buffering against the ones that we know are coming. Exactly. All right, well, speaking of weather that's coming, let's go ahead and get a first check of our forecast. All right, Beth, thank you. Look what we did today. High temperatures back in the mid 30s across the area, and we're just getting started. Even warmer temperatures are on the way, likely some 40s back in the forecast by the weekend. And the wind is finally dying down after four days of wind gusts near 35 miles per hour. This will go calm for a couple hours. Sign so come out tomorrow, basically out of the west throughout the afternoon. All right, lots of clouds out there early today, and then some clearing skies throughout the afternoon. Overall, we have some increasing clouds again for overnight tonight into tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, but no rain or snow in our forecast anytime soon, most likely until probably Saturday into Sunday. Our forecast then tonight looking at mostly cloudy skies and partly cloudy skies. Low temperatures down near 20. Your full forecast is coming up. Beth? All righty, Jeff, thank you so much. And still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, supporting and caring for those with Alzheimer's disease was front and center at the State House today. Our Augusta reporter Corey Bouchard has more. And volunteers have been fundraising to buy Haystack Mountain in order to keep it from being developed. We'll have that story and more when we come right back. Hi, I'm Angelina Mucci. And I'm Andy Mucci of Family Fun Bowl and Center. When we want to know the weather, we go to foxbangor.com. Celebrating our 50th anniversary year, Family Fun Bowling Center has 20 lanes of 10-pin bowling at its best. 
Hi, this is Jim with Lowry & Associates. Some guy slid across the center line and hit my daughter. The cops said the guy was driving way too fast for the snowy conditions. I'm so sorry you guys are going through this. Is your daughter okay? She just had surgery yesterday. Is there any way you can come meet us at the hospital? Absolutely. I can meet you at the hospital right now. Lowry & Associates came to the hospital and settled my daughter's case for $250,000. I'm Jim with Lowry & Associates. Call us. We win for you. Valentine's Day is almost here, and at Quality Jewelers, we're going to help you make it one to remember. Any purchase made between now and Valentine's Day is going to come with a card, chocolates, and a stuffed animal. Also, for a limited time, qualified buyers will receive a pair of VS Lab Diamond Studs, an incredible value. Shop exquisite styles of fine jewelry right in downtown Bangor with us here at Quality Jewelers. Quality Jewelers, locally owned and operated, Penobscot Plaza, Bangor. If you're looking to buy or sell a home, chances are you have a lot of questions. Norm Prouty has answers. Learn some tips and tricks and explore some beautiful new homes on the market. The Norm Prouty and Danelle Baker Real Estate Show, Sunday mornings at 8.30 on Fox 22. Hammond Lumber Company has been a trusted partner of professional contractors, do-it-yourselfers, and homeowners for generations. It's the level of trust that Hammond Lumber has earned by providing an extensive selection of products and materials from industry-leading suppliers with guidance and support through every stage of any project, including delivery of materials throughout Maine and New Hampshire. Hammond Lumber Company is, has been, and will always be your building project partner. Who's a fake? Let's get it on. And who's the real deal? Right from the start to the All new I Can See Your Voice, Wednesdays on Fox. You can join Fox 22 and ABC7 online at foxbangor.com. Be a part of the conversation on Twitter. And join our Facebook family at Fox ABC Maine. Follow, like, watch. Download the new Fox Bangor app from the App Store or Google Play. And get your news anytime, anywhere. Awareness, treatment, and support of those living with, al with Alzheimer's was a focus today at the State House. Our Augusta reporter, Corey Bouchard, was there and has the story. Access to early detection and diagnosis has never been more important. Jill Carney is the director of Maine Public Policy for the Alzheimer's Association. They spent Tuesday meeting with lawmakers and members of the public to raise awareness and support for those living with Alzheimer's, including Tracy Collins, who was first diagnosed with a benign brain tumor when she started having memory problems. She had the tumor removed, but that wasn't enough. My memory was still not really coming back and um, I was having difficulties um, doing day-to-day -day things and just memory in general. So I went and got tested because I have a family history and sure enough I was diagnosed with early onset. Carney says the treatments have come a long way in recent years. Um, I think the tumor maybe was something I was supposed to have so I could find um, a solution sooner and so I am taking the uh, Lacanby infusions and it seems to be helping me and I'm just trying to live my best health and my best way and um, hoping to so, so raise awareness about this cause and the need that you know even if you have mild cognitive impairment you're still able to do things and be useful in the community. Both Carney and Collins agree increased awareness of the disease is still needed. I think that there is a stigma with this disease and if I had cancer or anything else, you know, I, I, people would be really open to being supportive because there's a stigma, st stigma there. Um, it's kind of this thing that's supposed to be a secret and it's, you know, it's not, it's just another disease. Carney says the first step is recognizing the warning signs of the disease. A common warning sign is forgetfulness, short-term memory loss, and um, it's not just kind of misplacing where your keys are. I do that all the time. It's also having the, uh, losing the ability to retrace your steps and finding those keys again. At the State House, I'm Cora Bouchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. The University of Maine held a career fair for employers looking to hire students in the outdoor recreation industry. Our Matthew Jaroncic was there. University of Maine students gathered inside Memorial Union on campus to learn about the potential career paths at the 2024 Careers in Outdoor Recreation and Leadership event. 
We're hoping to help students make those connections and to figure out what can they do within that industry for summer positions, year-round positions, entry-level positions. The career fair was hosted by the school's Career Center and Outdoor Leadership Program. Outdoor recreation in Maine is continuing to see growth year over year. Research from Maine Outdoor Brands found the state's recreation economy grew 16.5% from 2021 to 2022, contributing $3.3 billion in revenue while also adding 32,000 jobs. So there's so many different benefits to being able to work outside. Uh, you get to be outside um, in the resources and you really get to have a really wonderful connection, not only with the resource itself, um, but with the other types of people who care about it. Employers say these opportunities allow students to keep working in the state. They provide a lot of the different opportunities and building of opportunities for Maine as a whole, the outdoor rec industry as a whole, and the Katahdin region. Students we spoke to say they're ready to plant their roots in the Pine Tree State. I'm here to learn more about some opportunities so that I can hopefully stay in Maine after I graduate. More importantly, it's what the outdoor recreation industry offers that has students gravitating to this field. Education um, paired with the outdoors is something that we take for granted. Um, so the more that we can push it and create all these new opportunities, the more we can involve others and uh, provide for our future generations. In Orno, Matthew Jaroncic, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Well, speaking of the great outdoors, Haystack Mountain is a beautiful spot that straddles the towns of Liberty and Montville. It's been used by skiers, hikers and school children for years. And in 2022, a group of volunteers formed Friends of Haystack Mountain and began fundraising in order to purchase the mountain and save it from development. As Jody Hersey tells us, that group is now within $45,000 of its fundraising goal. On a brisk winter day, friends and outdoor enthusiasts meet up to hike Haystack Mountain, which sits between Liberty and Montville in Waldo County. Martha Piscuskis, Buck O'Heron, and Kathy Roberts are volunteers with Friends of Haystack Mountain, a group fighting to preserve the mountain from development. This mountain is so well loved and well hiked. It's only um, a mile hike, it's very family friendly, but also because of the summit. It's clear. This 57 acre mountain had been previously owned by Allen's Blueberry Freezer Company, which planned to put it up for sale, according to Kathy Roberts. People want this mountain to exist as is. They don't want commercial development here. They want the opportunity to keep this public access open and to have a place that people can enjoy for generations to come. Friends of Haystack Mountain set a goal to raise $525,000 through grants, foundations, business support, and donations. We have a fiscal sponsor, Midcoast Conservancy, which is a local land trust. They will be the stewards of the property once we've raised all this money. Now with just $45,000 left to raise, the group is looking to sell winter hats featuring the mountain's logo and collect additional donations in order to reach its goal. And so the places that we love, now's the time to protect them and do what we can to make sure they're always there. Those who would like to learn more about Friends of Haystack Mountain can log on to haystackmountainmaine.org. In Montville, I'm Jody Hersey for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Hmm, sounds like a really beloved place and yeah. glad to see those efforts to preserve it uh, in that sense for yep. years to come. It's great too in the state of Maine there's some you know the natural resources are abounding and, and I bet lots of people have like that special spot that right. they love or that special trail that they always want to go back to mm -hmm. and you hate to think of a time when that wouldn't be available to them you know for whatever reason development or what have you so need to see those uh, those folks sort of taking the bull by the horn and working to preserve that spot. Yeah, and so close to their goal. Keep mm -hmm. going. Yeah, keep going. All right, well, coming up on the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22, Jennifer Crumbly, the mother convicted of convicted in that school shooting, has been found guilty of involuntary manslaughter. And the bipartisan Senate border bill looks to be going nowhere, with some members of the GOP calling for new leadership. The stories and more as 10 p.m. news on Fox 22 continues. Hello, fellow flyers. I'm the Savvy Traveler, here to share the secrets of convenience at Bangor International Airport. Parking, you're steps away from the terminal. Inside, even more conveniences. And friendly, efficient security. 
all of these make BGR the official airport of you. Remember the savvy travel through Bangor International Airport. FlyBangor.com. Let your creativity run free at the Creative Arts Center, where we offer fun and affordable activities for all ages. Birthday parties, pottery wheel classes, painting lessons, or just for the fun of it. Get fired up for glazing projects as well as acrylics. We offer a wide selection of ceramic products for you to choose from, and we have thousands of pieces ready to paint. We are a Paragon Kiln Dealer and a Laguna Clay Distributor. Stop by the Creative Arts Center today, located just off the Joshua Chamberlain Bridge in Brewer. The Creative Arts Center, where your only limitation is your imagination. CEM DP Porter Contractors has been in business for over 40 years in the Bangor area. We specialize in commercial, medical, and residential design build construction, as well as building maintenance and renovations. CEM DP Porter Contractors is currently hiring in Herman for multiple positions, including carpenters and a project manager superintendent. We offer vacation, holidays, a 3% IRA match, competitive pay, and a family-oriented environment. If interested in applying, please contact Jason at 848-7486. Why should your new floor come from Carpet One? Because we're passionate about the spaces our neighbors call home. We're part of your community, and we're also part of the world's largest cooperative of independently owned and operated flooring stores. So you can be sure you'll get great selection and outstanding value with every installation. Whether it's carpet, hardwood, tile, or luxury vinyl, our experts take the guesswork out of choosing the right floor. We're your local Carpet One Floor and Home, the one store for your perfect floor. What if I told you these people are related to these famous faces? Don't play games with your mama. Our new Fox show is a guessing game that's all relative. Ooh. Bet the performer to their superstar relative. I know the voice. And you could win life-changing money. Sign me up, Ed. What happened now I don't play games? <laughs> I never said that. We are family. All new Wednesdays on Fox and watch anytime on Hulu. There's one number you need to know. It's called Joe. A Michigan woman became the first parent in the nation to be charged and convicted after her child carried out a mass school shooting. The ruling came after defense attorneys argued the mother could never have anticipated what would happen. Fox's Bill Malusian has more. On count two of involuntary manslaughter in regards to Tate Muir. After nearly 11 hours of deliberations. We find the defendant guilty of involuntary manslaughter. A Michigan jury found 45-year-old Jennifer Crumbly guilty of involuntary manslaughter in connection with the 2021 mass shooting at Oxford High School that killed four students. The conviction setting a precedent in America as the very first time the parent of a school shooter has been found criminally liable for their child's actions. It was a, a long time coming, but it's definitely a, a step toward the accountability. Crumley was found guilty on all four counts of involuntary manslaughter, one count for each student killed by her son, Ethan. Seven others were also hurt in the attack, carried out by the then 15-year-old sophomore who is now serving a life sentence. His parents accused of buying him the gun he used in that shooting. There's a lot of stuff that could have easily um, thwarted this whole um, this whole thing. It could have stopped and stopped very easily. Prosecutors argued Jennifer Crumley ignored her son's mental health issues, despite outreach from his school about alarming behavior. Both parents were called to school on the day of the shooting to discuss a disturbing drawing Ethan had made, but refused to remove him from class. Hours later, their son murdered four classmates. It is your choice to have a child, and you cannot choose to not take care of your child. And Ethan's father, James Crumbly, was charged with the same four counts of manslaughter. His trial begins in March. Jennifer Crumbly will be sentenced in April. Bill Malugin, Fox News. Meanwhile, another court case involving former President Trump is likely to end up with the Supreme Court. This week, the highest court in the land will hear arguments on whether Trump can be barred from the presidential ballot in some states. And now his legal team is appealing yet another ruling that states Trump does not have presidential immunity in his election interference case. Fox's Rebecca Castor reports. It's a major legal blow for Donald Trump. 
A federal appeals court ruled he does not have presidential immunity over his alleged attempts to overturn the 2020 election. The court rejecting Trump's argument that his actions while president could never be prosecuted. What former President Trump was advancing was a sweeping and unprecedented claim of immunity. And that's, it's not surprising that this panel rejected it. In its decision, the court calls the former president a current citizen, writing any executive immunity that may have protected him while he served as president no longer protects him against this. Trump's campaign is already firing back, sharing in a statement, without complete immunity, a president would not be able to properly function. Extreme Democrats will stop at nothing in attempt to prevent President Donald Trump from returning to the White House. Trump's alleged involvement in events on January 6th has already gotten him thrown off the ballots in Colorado and Maine. The Supreme Court will hear arguments on this Thursday, while the former president's GOP colleagues are pushing a resolution that states Trump did not engage in insurrection. The protesters who were present in the Capitol building did so of their own volition. They were not encouraged and they were not led by the president to take any such actions other than to peacefully protest. Trump's team plans to appeal this latest ruling, holding up the former president's trial from starting in D.C. In Washington, Rebecca Castor, Fox News. The border bill could be a bust as opposition to the spending package mounts from both sides of the political spectrum. But the measure is causing major problems for the minority party in the Senate. Fox's Aisha Hosni has the latest from Capitol Hill. Tonight, anger amongst Senate Republicans. The leadership really screwed this up. And a call for a new leader. Senator Cruz, is it time for Mitch McConnell to go? I think it is. As a bipartisan border deal falls apart. I think we can all agree that Senator Cruz is not a fan. Senate Republicans are expected to block a vote on the border and national security package after GOP leader Mitch McConnell couldn't get half the conference to back it. Today, he pushed back on blame for misreading his colleagues. I followed the instructions of my conference. Things have changed over the last four months. And it's been made perfectly clear by the speaker that he wouldn't take it up. The House Speaker rejoicing the stalemate. We welcome that development because this is a matter that must be addressed in a manner that, address, that, that actually solves the problem. While Democrats lash out. They just don't have the backbone, the guts, the spine to resist the blandishments of Trump. But the left also disjointed. The chair of the Hispanic caucus says the bill fails to meet the moment. While Senator Alex Padilla, a hard no, demands protections and legal pathways for the undocumented. Not a single dreamer will benefit or receive relief. Now, Senate leaders could go back to the drawing board and put together a package coupling Israel aid with Ukraine aid, leaving border security completely out of it. On Capitol Hill, I'm Aisha Hasney, Fox News. Well, the Biden administration says it's reviewing a Hamas response to the framework of a potential hostage deal. It comes as Secretary of State Antony Blinken meets with negotiators in the Middle East. Fox's Mike Tobin now from Tel Aviv. As the fighting in Gaza rages on, there's new movement on the diplomatic front. On Tuesday, Secretary of State Antony Blinken met with Egyptian and Qatari leaders in an effort to secure a ceasefire agreement. Qatar's prime minister says negotiators have received a positive response from Hamas on a proposed hostage deal framework. What's happening on, on, uh, on the ground in Gaza, it affects the course of the negotiations all the time. The negotiation itself, it took some time in order to get them to a place where we get uh, that response. Hamas had been reviewing a proposal that includes extended pauses in fighting in exchange for Israeli hostages held in Gaza. The Iranian-backed group has previously called for the release of higher-profile Palestinian prisoners and a guarantee that Israeli forces will leave the Gaza Strip. There's still a lot of work to be done, but we continue to believe that an agreement is possible and indeed essential, uh, and we will continue to work relentlessly to achieve it. As talks continue, Israeli troops are still battling militants in the southern city of Khan Yunus. Defense Minister Yoav Gallant says ground operations will eventually reach the town of Rafah on the Egyptian border. More than one million civilians are estimated to be sheltering there. <laughs> We will also reach the places where we have not yet fought, in the center of the Gaza Strip and in the south. 
On Wednesday, Secretary Blinken travels to Israel for talks with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. In Tel Aviv, Mike Tobin, Fox News. Still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, Super Bowl ad teasers are already being released. We'll have that and more from Hollywood. And in sports, it's a top 10 matchup at the Alphon this weekend as Maine Hockey gets ready to host the Providence Friars. We'll be right back. This is going to be the toughest next level chef yet. I want my mom. Only the best will survive. All new next level chef, Thursdays at 8, 7 central on Fox. CEM DP Porter Contractors have been in business for more than 40 years. We have recently added an electrical division to further be of service to our loyal customers. CEM specializes in design, build, and commercial and residential projects. Whether you need help with older construction, new build-outs, or electrical services, CEM has you covered. CEM is currently hiring for all positions. We offer competitive pay as well as great benefits. To inquire about employment or construction, please reach out to 848-7486 or visit cemmaine.com. Come bowl a few games here at Bangor Brewer Bowling Lanes. We're one of the only Candlepin Bowling Alley Centers in Maine, conveniently located in the heart of Brewer. You always have the opportunity to simply bowl for fun. However, you can also join a league. We have youth leagues, adult and senior leagues. Now don't forget, we also host birthday parties for under $100, and gift certificates are also available. Give us a call right away at 989-3798 to make reservations for your birthday party today. My experience with Dave's World was extraordinary from start to finish, and I have unconditionally and frequently recommended Dave's World to numerous friends. I love my Mitsubishi electric heat pumps from Dave's World. They're efficient, they're quiet, and it's been a joy. Every single solitary person I dealt with at Dave's World was world class. I'm delighted with the decision that I made. Dave's World, awesome. It's high school basketball season, and ABC7 and Fox 22 are here to keep you up to date with your local scores and highlights during Friday night fast break. Get out and support your hometown teams and look for our sports crew to get your own free Friday night fast break t-shirt courtesy of Cormier's Bus Service, Healing Hands Massage, Jackson's Automotive, Scott's Recreation, Silver Fox Automotive, and Tilton's Auction. Everybody out there wants a partner and a best friend. For single farmers, saddle up. This might be hard to heal. To find lifelong love. Who thinks they've got what it takes to make it in the country? Well, don't <laughs> <forget>. <laughs> <laughs> I love your so it's all right. I'll just rip the other ones off. Here, take that. <laughs> I feel like the universe connects you with certain people for certain reasons. We had a fire going, and that wasn't the only spark. <laughs> An all-new Farmer Once a What. Thursdays on Fox and watch anytime on Hulu. Hollywood starts rolling out the Super Bowl teasers and a hit show brings a behind the scenes look at its final season. Fox's Ashley Dvorkin has that and more in today's Hollywood Nation. A celebration of genre, Cobra Kai back in the dojo and stars gear up for game day in the Hollywood Nation. Hey there, I'm Ryan Reynolds, star of the upcoming film, in today's first looks is friendship and football. Ryan Reynolds and John Krasinski, actually Randall Park as John Krasinski, star in a teaser for the If Super Bowl spot. It's a take on a bit from The Office. They share clips of the upcoming comedy, which is about a girl who can see everyone's imaginary friends. We'll see more Super Bowl Sunday. If is in theaters May 17th. This is dinner and a show. And the show was more dinner. Netflix released a first look of Somebody Feed Phil with food enthusiast Phil Rosenthal globe trotting his way through season seven. All eight episodes premiere March 1st. Season six. Take one. The streamer is also getting fans pumped for the sixth and final season of Cobra Kai, which airs this year. Stars of the Karate Kid spinoff sent a message with behind the scenes looks, sharing their back in production and promising this season is the biggest, baddest yet. Come on! 
The 51st annual Saturn Awards Sunday, hosted by Joel McHale, celebrated the best in genre entertainment. The show was dedicated to the memory of Lance Reddick, the late star of the John Wick movies. Among awards, Keanu Reeves received the first Lance Reddick Legacy Award. Oppenheimer director Christopher Nolan was presented the Visionary Award. And Jodie Foster received the Life Career Award. Winning films included Avatar The Way of Water, which won four, including Best Science Fiction Film. I see you. In Hollywood, Ashley Dvorkin, Fox News. Sad news tonight. Country singer Toby Keith has died after battling cancer. A post shared on the singer's account on X, formerly Twitter, says the country star passed away peacefully on Monday night. The Post also says Keith, quote, fought his fight with grace and courage. In 2022, the singer announced he'd been diagnosed with stomach cancer. Keith is known for the four hit songs like Red Solo Cup and Should Have Been a Cowboy. He was 62 years old and very much loved. All right, when we come back, we'll have our full five day forecast. Stay with us. High temperature is back in the mid 30s today and we are just getting started. 40s are back in the forecast along with some rain. Details on that when I come back. PDQ Door presents CHI Doors. CHI Doors are tough, dependable, engineered for fit and function. CHI Doors from PDQ Door, Hamden, Rockport, Bath, Waterville, Holton, Presque Isle, and PDQDoor.com. Maine Quit Link offers free help to stop smoking and vaping, including personalized quit plans and free patches, gum, and or lozenges with every program. Get connected to a quit coach, trained to develop a plan that works for you. Learn how to curb cravings and overcome slips and relapses. It's free, it works, and people who enroll are two times more likely to successfully quit. Call 1-800-QUIT-NOW or enroll online at mainquitlink.com. Tired of your internet service constantly letting you down? Those other providers may promise the world with their flashy advertisements, but are you truly having a good customer experience? Fear not, because there's a new player in town. Introducing GoNetSpeed. No more endless hold times or automated responses. We're here to listen, support, and provide you with the exceptional service you deserve. Our fast, reliable fiber internet, it's mind-blowing. Let us show you what true internet satisfaction feels like. Start with a bang. Invite a bunch of friends, then fill the infield like a rock concert. Mix in some superstar power. And turn them loose. Speed or not, a 500 mile all out fight for NASCAR's biggest prize. That's the Great American Race. The Daytona 500, February 18th on Fox. Always standing ready to answer the call to service. Service your garage door. PDQ door. PDQDoor.com. The most anticipated event of the Wait, year. Ah! You're ruining the show. Here we go. Your full weather is brought to you by Washington County Community College. Discover choices, create success. Don't miss out on free college. And let's talk about really nice temperatures today. Hanging out in the mid 30s across much of the area. We'll probably do a few upper 30s tomorrow. And then there are some 40s back in the five day forecast. All right, the wind today. This has been a problem, you know, the last four days around here. Wind gusts out of the north around 20 to 30 miles per hour. It's dying down out there now. Uh, we'll likely have wind gusts near 10 miles per hour overnight tonight. And and likely go calm before sunrise too. So overall, the wind will not be a factor tomorrow. In fact, I'm going to run this through tonight, through tomorrow into Thursday. And again, some calm wind at times. I don't say that very often around here, as you know, but a great couple of days on the way. Until then, though, here's our small craft advisory runs through tomorrow morning uh, for wave heights out here approaching 8 to 10 feet through tomorrow morning. All right, so temperature-wise, we're building lots of heat across the Midwest currently, uh, and we're going to get a piece of this our direction as well. 
well as we do have warmer temperatures in the forecast. Until then, though, the really cold stuff is way up here and likely staying there for a while. So in a very strange winter with temperatures. But overall, we'll keep these kind of moderating temperatures. And then 40s are back in the forecast by the weekend around here. Out there today, again, kind of breezy earlier. The wind dying down pretty much all day long today. Uh, there will be a few more clouds in the area tonight and then probably mostly cloudy skies for a few hours tomorrow. But overall, it's going to be a nice day tomorrow. Also a nice day for us on Thursday, followed by another weather system getting in here probably later Friday and over the weekend with some rain showers are in the forecast, courtesy of this system right here. This thing's been making national news for four or five days now, bringing a foot of rain to L.A., feet of snow in the uh, mountain areas there. Now moving into parts of Denver and the plains as well, creating all sorts of issues there. Uh, we'll get a piece of that later in the weekend. Until then, though, we're kind of dry around here with temperatures slowly getting warmer and warmer and warmer. Our forecast, though, tonight we're talking about partly cloudy skies, some mostly cloudy skies for a while. Look for low temperatures down near 17 with a north breeze around 5 going calm well after midnight. For tomorrow, here we go. So lots of sunshine tomorrow. There'll be a couple clouds in the area. Look for high temperatures near 36. A couple of you, though, with that added sunshine could go for 40 on uh, the north breeze around 5. And then looking ahead, your five-day forecast shows a story. So 36 tomorrow. Okay, we got this Thursday. Lots of sunshine, 38. A couple of you do 40 on Thursday. And then look what happens. Friday, more cloud cover, high temperature 39. Or, and then look at the weekend. Here we go. Some rain showers back in the forecast for Saturday with a high temperature back in the mid to upper 40s. And then we stay there on Sunday under mostly cloudy skies. Beth. All righty, Jeff. Thanks so much. And sports is coming right up next. Stay with us. When you've experienced fire and smoke damage in your home, when pipes break and you have water everywhere, when you're concerned about your family's health because of mold, you need a friendly face to take care of it all. You need the friendly faces of Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. We're just a click or call away. Whatever life throws at you, Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration is here for you. Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. You keep the memories, we'll handle the rest. Are plumbing problems giving you a headache? Look no further than Sprague's Plumbing Solutions. With more than 10 years experience, Sprague's Plumbing Solutions has the knowledge to assist with your plumbing issues. Whether it's a service, remodel, new build, or commercial, we've got you covered. For reliable, professional plumbing services, call Sprague's Plumbing Solutions today for a free estimate. 951-1637. We're here to make your plumbing problems disappear. Valentine's Day is almost here, and at Quality Jewelers, we're going to help you make it one to remember. Any purchase made between now and Valentine's Day is going to come with a card, chocolates, and a stuffed animal. Also, for a limited time, qualified buyers will receive a pair of VS Lab Diamond Studs, an incredible value. Shop exquisite styles of fine jewelry right in downtown Bangor with us here at Quality Jewelers. Quality Jewelers, locally owned and operated, Penobscot Plaza, Bangor. Did you know that cervical cancer can be prevented with regular screening? I was only 22, so I was pretty overwhelmed when my routine pap test showed precancerous cells. But a simple procedure took care of it, and I'm doing great now. A pap test identifies abnormal cells before they become cancerous. I'm so relieved. I will never skip my pap tests. If you're age 21 to 65, ask your provider about pap tests or learn more at ScreenMaine.org. Tonight's sports is brought to you by Diversified Ink Tattoo Studio in Bangor, located in the Penobscot Plaza, providing custom ink by licensed artists for more than 20 years. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. Let's start up at the Alphonde, where Maine hockey is preparing for a huge weekend. The 7th-ranked Black Bears are back at home, hosting the 10th-ranked Providence Friars. In Hockey East standings, Maine is in third with 28 points and Providence right behind them in fourth with 26. So it's a big two-game series with playoff seeding and implications and it will most likely be a sold-out Alphonde Arena. Talking to the team today, uh, on Tuesday, I asked just how do you stay even keel in a game that intense? Um, the game's a game, you know, like it's no one game is bigger than the next game. Um, you know, and we have to keep our composure and you know, you make a mistake, recover from a mistake, right? It's the second and the third mistake that, that usually 
it usually compounds and it ends up in the in the back of your nets. It's like playoff atmosphere. I mean, the Alphonse is going to be rocking uh, Friday and Saturday, and so it's just like you, you just got to stay level, you know. And like as as older guys in the team who have been there before, it's like just keeping everybody uh, right at that that middle pace. Don't let your highs get too high, your lows get too low. It's a cliche, but it, it holds true. All right, we're going to go to some high school wrestling now. Belfast Wrestling has two stars that could potentially get that gold medal and regionals coming up at this weekend and eventually states their careers are just beginning. Ryan Sudall has more. We're very fortunate to have them, and the beauty is we've got them for three more seasons. Belfast has a rich history on the wrestling mat, and this year it's two freshmen that are the ones turning heads, Zadie Page and Dom Simpson. It feels pretty powerful that even if you just start new, that you can come in and beat people. It feels good. I just keep coming to practice and I take it one tournament at a time. Paige, who just started wrestling last year, is ranked first at Girls 165 statewide. Simpson has nearly 50 wins and is a KVAC champion. They're coming up here from the middle school program with a high level of technical skill. So we owe that to our middle school program and their coaches. For Paige, strength has always been there, but technique is something she has especially stepped up in her nearly 25 win season. I wasn't really good at technique at first, but after showing up and doing that, it's, it's pretty good. But where she really shines is something you don't find on a scoreboard, her grit. It's inspirational, it's exciting to see as a coach, and I think it sprinkles off on the rest of the team as well. Simpson is a veteran of the game at this point, and he's only gotten better at the high school ranks too. I was always good on my feet, but this year I tried to improve on bottom. Coaches have helped me with that. You gotta have the technique, you gotta be savvy with what you're doing. And for somebody that young, he's got obviously a bright future ahead of him. The ultimate goal for both Paige and Simpson is to get on that state finalist board and become a part of history. It's a big deal, especially in a storied program like Belfast. I've been coming to this high school since youth, and it's just something I wanted to always do. I'm very excited. I'm just going to go out there and do my best. That drives them. That motivates them. If they got their names up there on that board, they'd be part of the history here at the school, and that'd be something really special. In Belfast, I'm Ryan Sudall, ABC7, Fox 22 Sports. All right, thanks for that, Ryan. Wishing them luck. Let's go to the hardwood now. A big one on Tuesday night. Orno and Old Town, two of the top teams in boys B North, facing off in their regular season finales. And this one was too big for any high school gym to hold, so they had to play it at the pit. So to the University of Maine we go for a game that delivered in all ways it was promised. We're going to pick it up in the second half, real close game. Some great ball movement around the arc by Orno. It ends up with Pierce Walston, and he drills the long range three that puts the riots up one under 30 to go in the third old towns Emmett bite they're out to DJ Francis in the corner that one goes down we are tied at 37 after three to the fourth bite there to Tyler Priest in the other corner and that's good that puts the Coyotes up three but Orno got hot late. Here's Walston into Brett. Ben Francis, he goes to the bucket and one through the fall. Riots go on a big run to end. They win 59-48. All right, let's do some other scores in basketball. Last week of the regular season, so a lot of big matchups here. Camden Hills over Skowhegan, 58-51. Ellsworth beats MDI and girls, 60-48. Lawrence over Brewer, 69-58. Then Skank beats Machias. They finish unbeaten, just like Ellsworth, 48-43. All right, so let's go to the hockey rink now for some high school hockey as that season winds down as well. We'll pick this game up at Sawyer Arena. It's Hamden Academy hosting Gardner and Waterville and Winslow, that co-op. First period, Broncos with it. Matt Shane takes it down. Look at this beautiful pass to Evan Vebs, but a nice stop from Jack Crochet keeps the game scoreless. But here come those Broncos again. Zach Wilson's going to get it. He shoots, and Lucas Dunn ends up with it, fires a wrister in, and he gets it to go. It's one to nothing Broncos. Then the offense would continue for Hamden. This time it's Keith Brooks going the length of the ice, alone with the goalie, makes his move and scores. That's filthy right there. Broncos win this one 8-2. to two. All right, that is all the time we have for sports. We'll be right back after the break. We're lucky to live in Maine. We have a wealth of natural resources, hardworking people, and time for the things that matter. Mechanical Services is all about Maine, with energy efficiency that protects our environment and helps businesses grow. Preventive maintenance and energy solutions that save money. 
How Maine is that? Mechanical Services. We're everywhere you are in Maine. I told myself I was okay with my moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis symptoms. With my psoriatic arthritis symptoms. But just okay isn't okay. And I was done settling. If you still have symptoms after a TNF blocker like Humira or Enbro, Rinvoke is different and may help. Rinvoke is a once daily pill that can rapidly relieve joint pain, stiffness and swelling in RA and PSA, relieve fatigue for some and stop joint damage. And in PSA can leave skin clear or almost clear. Rinvoke can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB, serious infections and blood clots, some fatal, cancers including lymphoma and skin, heart attack, stroke, and GI tears occurred. People 50 and older with a heart disease risk factor have an increased risk of death. Serious allergic reactions can occur. Tell your doctor if you are or may become pregnant. Done settling? Ask your rheumatologist for Rinvoke and take back what's yours. Avi could help you save. I got hurt by a big truck. Why did I call the twos? Because life-changing injuries deserve life-changing money, and I'll fight to get it for you. We got a client who broke multiple bones in a commercial vehicle accident, $700,000. Another client had a brain injury, and we got them $1.15 million. If you get hurt by a big truck, call the twos. We win for you. Hurt by a big truck, call the twos. We win for you. Harvey High is now in session. Today's subjects, science. Name something that can make the earth move. Heavy rain. Hold on, it rain. Health class. Something you drop in the toilet and still use it afterwards. Toothbrush. Nah. I'm not sticking that in my mouth. We're not doing teeth brushing today. Get schooled with Family Feud. Weeknights at 7 on Fox 22. The baddest superstars on the planet are unleashed in prime time. From the heaven! All new Friday Night Smackdown at 8, 7 Central on Fox. Welcome back, and finally tonight, Literacy Volunteers of Bangor is looking to recruit new tutors ahead of a series of scheduled training sessions. Members of the organization volunteer their time to help adults learn how to read, write, and understand English better. They say new volunteers don't need to have any prior teaching experience. They're just looking for people who are passionate about helping others. If you show up to that person and just read with them a little bit, let them read to you. Um, my student asked me the other day if I was their only student, and I said yes, and they were so happy to know that. <clears throat> Sorry, someone was caring about just them. Tutors will kick off on February 27th with an information session followed by four separate evening classes. And here's hoping they can get uh, plenty more volunteers to help fill their ranks. It's certainly an organization that does so much to help people in the Bangor area. Well, literary, liter literacy is so crucial just to daily life. You have access to the world in a way that you just don't when literacy is a challenge for you. And so it's really great to see that there's an organization just devoted to helping other people open those doors for themselves. Absolutely. And yeah. You, yeah, you gotta love, like, there really aren't any prior requirements. You just need to... You just need to care. Care, you're right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, that is going to do it for us, folks, from everyone here at Fox 22 News. Take care and have a great rest of your night. Good night, everyone.